Hey everybody and welcome to episode three of the Red Sofa Conversations. I'm coming to you from London. On the Red Sofa with me today is my friend Jo, who I met six years ago. So Jo, the reason that I've created this interview series is because for me, I believe that conversation is the gateway to connection. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that that's how um, we became friends. Um, so a little bit of background, uh, Jo is a coach and consultant and she helps people find and express their message. And I met Jo at a Matthew Hussey uh, event, which they don't run in London anymore, it was called, it was the Get the Guy Weekend. And Jo had recently been on Matthew's retreat and I was thinking of going. And she came in and she spoke and I have to say, Everything she said, it just made me weep. And so I ran after her and I said, I'd really love to go to coffee with you. Um, and could we could we have a chat? And since then, that was pretty much it. We've became friends. And Jo's actually been really significant in my life because if I hadn't met her, I wouldn't have discovered my speakers club, um, the former Pony Express, which is now Speaker Express and I wouldn't be a speaker and I wouldn't be doing this. So Aww, thank you so much, really... Joe. I always, always remember you um, when I'm doing anything creative because I feel that, that for me, you really kick-started that for me in my life six years ago. So thank you. That's really beautiful. Oh, thank you. So today's topic, do you want to announce it? Um, okay, yeah, well, we, we were thinking about what to, to talk about and I think there's lots of quite big meaty subjects we 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 were sort of pondering um but I think one thing we're both really passionate about is is creativity and yeah. kind of um I know I know for me personally I've kind of um almost like allowing yourself to be yeah creative and and actually allowing allowing yourself to exp express yourself for example you know mentioning that talking talking to in front of a group of people yeah. is not something that I would have entertained really 10 years ago or would have actually I would have done it under duress really yeah but actually that when I when when I spoke in that group and and you heard that it was like it was really like a time of me realizing actually the joy in speaking and yeah. actually um it's just a really beautiful way to like connect with with people and and um yeah it's a really for me it's a really heart centered experience it's, it feels really um it's just a beautiful way to yeah have that sort of group connection yeah um, and, and once you get over the sort of the fear oh actually yeah, yeah. well yeah the fear, <laughs> the fear of doing it then it's yeah and and actually yeah sort of underneath that is this this beautiful way of um it's like a wellspring of things that you didn't know yeah. you sort of had in you because I don't know about you but I was a very creative child and so when I, I grew up um, my parents really fostered um, a love of the arts so you know we we would go to shows and um, they were passionate about music and they always encouraged like taking me to lots of plays I, I saw um, the Royal Shakespeare Company had come to Bahrain where I grew up and the first play, I, the Shakespeare play I saw was A Midsummer Night's Dream. But even then, you know, going to see bands and um, traveling, going to museums and everything. And I wrote poetry, I wrote short stories, um, limericks, um, I played music. So I did a lot when I was at school. And the one thing that I found is that actually, since leaving school, I was more of a consumer rather than a creator. And I didn't realise any of this because I've always loved going to the theatre. It's one of the things I love most about London. Um, and it was only around 2013 when I came to speaking and I started opening myself up and actually um, sharing, sharing who I was through my creativity that I realised, wow, I, I've, I've lo I had lost this along the way. And it had been... Let's see, it had been at least uh, 20, 20 odd years that I hadn't been doing any writing or, or, or speaking or, or, or drama or anything like that. And so for me, it's almost, it feels like a very full circle experience of my life because it's coming back to 
something that was such a part of me. And I thought that it was something that I did rather than who I was, but now I very much identify with being a creative. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, you know, for the people out there, like I bet you that like, like me, when you, know, you hear the word of, of being a creative and you think, oh, it means that you're a painter or it means that you're a musician and it means that, you know, you actually produce tangible art that people are gonna come and see and listen to. But as we both know from Liz Gilbert, um, you can, anybody can introduce creativity in their life and you can be creative in, I think, the small cracks of time. Um, so it's not an endeavor that you need to uh, do with a result in mind or, you know, with, um, to be creative, you don't have to, you know, have your work be legitimized. I think creativity is an expression of who you are. Mm. What do you think? And yeah, and kind of, um, I always think of like um, of nature, really. Like nature's creating all the time. Like, yeah. the, like this plant is just just comes into being, and 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 it just is. And and, and there's no actual point in a way. Like it's mm -hmm. not kind of like um, it's it just is. And 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 it's beautiful and perfect and complete in in that expression and every plant is different every blade of grass is different and mm -hmm. it's kind of like um yeah it's like we are we are nature we are part of that and that is you know and, and it's easy to forget and easy to think that there's like this somehow this division or or that that we're this separate entity in this this world out there but actually it's kind of like we are we are we are part of that that sort of natural expression and it's always mm -hmm. happening and 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 yeah exactly there's no real like reason you know you don't as you say you don't need it to have a have a particular reason for for doing you know whatever whatever um whatever you create is enough yeah yeah this reminds me of the Julia Cameron quote that I just um that that I just found which is um, creativity lies not in the done but the doing and i really agree with that i mean when you think of your creativity and coming back to it were you a creative child did you have a gap where you didn't create as much or have you been creating sort of all through your life um i definitely was a very expressive child and would love to kind of just dance and all these things yeah and then um i there was a switch kind of at secondary school where I just felt it was all very much academic work and kind mm -hmm. of, um, yeah, I, it was all about the intellect really and, yeah. and kind of like, I sort of kind of came out of school and I had like straight A's and I'd done really well academically but I felt really kind of disconnected and, mm -hmm. and like I didn't even, I mean I wouldn't have even used that word, I just felt very anxious and depressed and kind yeah. of like um, just just lost really I suppose because I wasn't I'd spent so long kind of do, you know just studying really and, and but to achieve a goal to, to achieve yeah a exactly result, yeah. And, and not actually to um I was just very disconnected from what what I enjoyed and what I liked to do yeah. and it was it was kind of um yeah and that was that was it eventually it kind of uh, yeah it just got to a very I just got to a very book I was panic attacks and all those kind of mm. things and it was like um it had all got a bit too heady and just like walking through treacle really and and then it um and actually I found the app my outlet was through alcohol really that was where I felt more peaceful again and more joy mm -hmm. and I could be more expressive and and um so for about 10 years after school that was kind of like well we all I, I find felt, different coping mechanisms yeah, exactly. right and that was that the, we unconsciously or consciously slip into yeah. yeah and that was the one for me that um I suppose helped me get out of my head and and mm -hmm. and relax, but obviously it's not a particularly healthy thing to do. Yeah. But at, at the time, um, that was what made sense, and that's what what kind of um, helped me get by, I suppose. Um, so, what was the gateway into sort of, I guess, rediscovering or re-nurturing your creativity? Uh, what did you start doing, or did you stumble into it, or was it a more conscious thing? Um, it was definitely. Um, my mum's death and, and I had a, a few years of um, like right real kind of 
life changing experiences yeah. like her death and losing my job and my relationship splitting up all in the space of like two years so it was kind yeah. of like everything that I thought every sort of structure I thought I had in my life just kind of fell apart and and um it was through um that experience and actually seeing seeing her strength in that process as she was dying and and also um things like speaking at her funeral and and things like that which again started that real feeling of of speaking from the heart and yes. and and really feeling that connection again like i felt like it was like an unthawing really and 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 actually um it it was a process i started to open my heart to um life again um yeah. without needing to drink basically yeah. and and that was that was the difference um it's a sort of a growing understanding that it's there anyway and, and that you don't need you don't need substances you don't need anything outside yourself yeah exactly and and that was um but o o often it does take something like a, an extreme pain yeah I, I think to to sort of completely change your world yeah i mean i feel like this journey of you know speaking um and speaking out and talking about things that are important and sharing things that I'm passionate about. I described the process actually, and I've only recently sort of stumbled upon this idea. It's it's finding my voice, and for me, you know, that that isn't a literal thing of actually being able to use my voice because I've always been a bit of a chatterbox. Um, but I think it means for me finding my voice is actually living in the fullest expression of who I am, and it's definitely not something that I was conscious of um, and we both suffered loss um, you with your mum and I lost my cousin as you know um, eight, eight, eight and a half years ago and actually I feel that the, 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 the period post those losses because you introduced me to this term of when we were sitting in that cafe at the Royal Festival Hall and you described that um, the period that happens after you have a significant traumatic event whatever that event is is post-traumatic growth. And I feel very much that uh, because I lost my cousin and he was at a young age and he didn't get the chance to, um, to you know, to grow up, you know, to sort of self-actualize, um, I, I, it's made me very conscious of um, wanting to be as authentic as possible and and do things that make me happy and actually find my way to joy. And joy is never a word that I'd ever actually uttered out loud before he died, but I felt such an absence of joy in the months that followed that um, it felt like I felt I was devoid of it. And literally in the eight, eight years, it's been, you know, it's been finding my way back to that and joyful moments. and seeing beauty in in nature and seeing beauty in in you know shop windows and i take pictures of things and and i think that through capturing moments and capturing beauty that's creative and so for people who are thinking that that they have to actually be doing something which um which tangibly produces something that's widely acknowledged i would say you know absolutely not you know you can be creative in how you dress you can be creative in how you arrange your, your house. You can be creative in how you arrange food. You know, like literally, you know, you can be creative in any sphere. And it's more about, um, I think creativity is, we were talking about earlier, that it's, it's a spiritual endeavor. You know, it's sort of, and for people that, spirituality is kind of hard actually, you know, like I didn't really know how to define spirituality um, until a few months ago when I did a course uh, which touched upon it. And even then in that course, they said that spirituality is actually a hard concept. But for me, when I think of something spiritual, I think of something from the soul. And that's what I feel like creativity is. Um, and I think that you're right. You know, when you said how in secondary school, um, you, you, know, you felt that the emphasis was more on, on, on academia. I think that's starting a lot earlier because I volunteered at a primary school and um, I've seen, you know, and I've, I've talked to people, you know, that are in the system and, and they say that, you know, there isn't as much opportunity right now within school for kids to be 
you know, truly creative and find themselves through that. Mm. Um, and I think it, it's really important in life, you know, for both children and for adults to have a little bit of creativity in their life. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, why, why do you think for you it, it's essential? Um, I, ju- I just think it's kind of, um, I think culturally we, we're used to kind of building this muscle of the intellect, like, l- yeah. l- and, and the intellect is rewarded and, um, you know, to go to get a degree is like considered the pinnacle of, mm-hmm. um, achievement. of studying achievement yeah. and things like that. And, and, um, I'm thinking of that Ken Robinson TED talk on why schools kill creativity. I don't think I've watched Have that. Have you not watched that? Yeah, yeah. So that's amazing because he talks about how, you know, there's a hierarchy really where like sort of maths and science at the top yeah. and then like music and art are kind yeah. of like somewhere down at the bottom. Um, and I'm always actually I, I reminded as well of like um, my friend An- Andy who, who's a builder and he always says, oh yeah, you know, like we're sort of like, we're sort of on a par with like road sweepers in terms of how we're considered. <laughs> <laughs> in like, um, um, but then he's such a creative person. Like the way he sees buildings and and like what he's done with his house and kind of like he can just look at an empty space or a derelict building and just imagine what that could be. And yeah. and that is such a creative thing. I mean, like seeing possibility, right? Yeah, exactly. And and it's very yeah. He's very sort of visually creative and um, yeah. And it's kind of like and and obviously. Um, there's there's nothing wrong with the intellect. There's nothing wrong with like no. the science and all the all those different things. Like they're all, you know, amazing, beautiful things as well. But it's kind of like, um, yeah, there's, there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance of, of more of those, I suppose, more expressive things. Or I mean, they're all expressive in in their way. But we, I don't think we can have a hierarchy of, of you know, of mu- music and important. dance being like less desirable than. Um, it's like those trivial pursuits. Do you remember the, the the chips where you have like oh, all yeah, of those yeah, yeah. Th- th- things? And I think that I think you're absolutely right because when you think of of life, you know, it's important. It's interesting that you talk about it as flexing a muscle, because I never really thought about it like flexing a creative muscle. I thought about flexing like an emotional muscle or an intellectual muscle or you know I guess the physical muscle, um, but. You're right. You know, like by by indulging a little bit in creativity, in of any f- shape or form, I actually think that it has a knock on effect. And Einstein in in Big Magic, Liz Gilbert says that um, when you're blocked in a particular area, it's really important to take a step away and do something else. And so she talks about like if you're blocked, you know, writing wise, then go, you know, throw a ball about or do some gardening or whatever. And she gives the she gives the um, the example of how Einstein con- calls it combinatory play, and how doing one thing then opens the gateway, opens the doorways of your mind to the other thing. And so then, when you come back to it, you feel probably because your brain has had the ability to process in a, in a different way, mm-hmm. rather than kind of sitting there trying to like write and nothing coming out. Um, you're more open, and 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 I, so I think that it actually is essential for adults where we are, you know, in a more intellectual space as a grown-up, you know, being grown-up, I think it's important. I think creativity actually helps you to do those other things that you might need to do, you know, if your job is a particular thing, better. Yeah. Plus it gives you an outlet, and it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, fun, exactly. You said fun and joy earlier as well, and it's just kind of like... um, Yeah, I mean, joy for you might be doing a physics equation or or you know that might you know and I think um I'm thinking of did you ever read the the surrender experiment by Michael Singer no and he, oh he's yeah it was amazing basically he sort of like decided just to like go with whatever came to him and his his life was amazing anyway he set up this 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 um hugely successful IT company and okay he then wrote a book called the um the untethered soul um, oh, that's why I've heard of him. Oprah's talked about him. Yeah, before. It's, it's a beautiful book. It's amazing, okay. and and he's um, he was kind of doing this, had this business alongside had, having this place for meditation, and um, he was sort of going on this journey with things. Um, but he talked about like computer programming, like mm. an art form, 
and it was like really and that was obviously his thing like I'm sure if I if you spoke to like Steve Jobs or, or someone like that they you know they'd see numbers and code as like you know a, a musician sees music yeah, or you yeah. know it, it's, it's kind of like that is their that is their way to express and I, and I and I suppose it's kind of like um and and yeah there's a sort of fluidity to it and and he he was just saying it just kind of this company that he built it's sort of like a multi-million company it sort of just sort of happened but it, it, he he always just sort of saw he just he just he said he always just it always made sense to him like computers, computers and, and things yeah and, and, it, and, it, and it was effortless and and that was and um so he clearly was in flow. He was, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I think that, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's kind of like, I think we have these clues of like what, like what to, what to be drawn to. And, and like for, for me, um, you know, I studied things like economics and things at school and it was like, it was never really, what it was never really a love. Um, I did English, which was, I, which was more in tune because I, um, I, I love writing as well, but it was kind of like, um, and I did enjoy English at school. So it wasn't all kind of doom and gloom, and um, but it was kind of like um, it. I wasn't really in flow with like like maths for me is not is not something I can do it, and I did it for A level and things like that. But I didn't really feel. It was always like it was always quite hard work. It was always like uh, yeah, it was always that kind of intellectual kind of. Um, so you did learning. maths, English, and what was your third one? Economics and art. Yeah. Okay, so you had so the it counterbalance was, it was between quite, the, yeah, yeah. the science and the art. Yeah, um, but um, what do you yeah. do? What do you do now? Like when you think about how you indulge your creativity, what do you do now? Um, I think it's well. I think there's 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 two things. There's kind of like um, there's the physical things that I do. So, for example, I love. I'm in a choir, and I just love singing mm -hmm. and I never really let myself sing before because I don't I don't particularly have an you know a, you know how some people just have beautiful voices mm -hmm. and I just don't have that but I just love singing and so that's been a real gift the last few years of just actually going what choir like, is that? Uh, rock, rock choir it's kind of oh, like cool. a they're really cheesy and they yeah, I love it really <laughs> if they imagine I'll cut, magic I'll fm <laughs> and just, but with rock yeah, with yeah. rock songs yeah well yeah have you done bon I think Jovi? We're, we're doing Barry Manilow next term which is <laughs> hilarious <laughs> <laughs> um, it's brilliant. It's so it's so cheesy, um, but yeah, there's just stuff like that. But also, it's kind of um, no noticing noticing what makes your heart sing. Really, yeah. Like, like, like I love to walk along the river, and I just love no noticing like the beauty of, of life, and and um, yeah, like. Like letting your soul speak, really. I think, and yeah. and, and indulging. I feel. I I, I want to say the word indulge, although. It, perhaps I don't think I don't I think indulging is a bad word. I think indulging means immersing and letting yourself sit and explore. And I think that any exploration is is really valuable. I mean, I I years ago I sort of made this like very clear distinction in my brain that you know following your you know the term following your passion I've, I've done a talk about it as well but following your passion really well didn't resonate with me it just felt made me feel really pressured and made me feel like I was failing because I couldn't understand how being a, a really passionate person as I am I couldn't figure out what my passion was you know the thing that I was meant to do and so I flipped it and I remember saying I'm this isn't working for me I'm just going to follow my curiosity instead and it's quite funny now because there's a lot of people that, that talk about curiosity and how you know curi following your curiosity is so important mm. because it, it, it even Liz Gilbert talks about it in Big Magic she says um, something like you know P your passion has more high stakes whereas your curiosity is just hey I'm going to give this a go I'm going to try I'm going to see it yeah. and I love I love the fact that you're in that you're in a choir I started singing as well last September and I when I stumbled upon um, stage in the city performing arts school um, so they are the adult arm of the Anna Fiorentini Film and Theatre School uh, which was which she founded 17 years ago and it's to give kids um this access to performing arts that they 
we don't necessarily have in school. And I think the brilliant thing like that performing arts and arts can do for kids is that it gives them an outlet, as we said, to sort of find their voice and experiment with who they are and try different things on. And you know, you can have the kids that just love performing mm-hmm. and then you can have the kids that maybe are a little shy and just maybe they they then they're not as great academically or maybe they they don't feel that they have something in them and then when they start doing it and they start you know indulging and and testing and and being curious then they start discovering a little bit more about who they are and it's that i think is integral to a kid's a child's development um and so stage in the city is for adults who have you know day jobs who want to um try out you know something in the performing arts um, sphere and so they do acting classes and dance classes and singing uh, yeah so I so I, I performed last Saturday in a show with my musical theatre company and, and city singers and it's it's funny like when you said you know you, you, you don't feel like you're a particularly amazing singer I don't feel I'm a particularly amazing singer I could definitely work on it but it's the pure joy of singing mm-hmm. and singing collectively I think also you know when you do when you collaborate there's magic in that, you know, like, because you feel like you're part of a tribe and you feel like you're all, like, pulling for each other on stage. And I'd forgotten what that feeling was like because I hadn't been in a play since school. And on Saturday, when we were all together and just even seeing the rehearsals of, of the other the other classes, it felt like magic. Mm. And it was such a beautiful experience and it just made me, it reaffirmed to me how important it is, you know, having these these outlets in my life yeah and how much it adds yeah uh, and definitely with like as you say singing together it's like that um it's like that connection we were talking about when yeah. we talk about public speaking yeah. it's kind of like it's like the same thing it's just like having one voice as many and 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 it just the boundaries but uh, like the idea that we're sort of these separate things just that starts to melt a bit and mm-hmm. and, and kind of um yeah, just get lost in that feeling of um, connection with everyone. Um, it's beautiful. I've, I mean, I've often got tears in my eyes just crying, and like like as I'm singing, and um, but it's just beautiful. It's just so heart opening and, and kind of um, bonding. It's yeah. a lovely. It's it's like a, it's almost like a spiritual experience. It is. Yeah, yeah, and I think. Um, It is, and I think um, I, I kind of don't really see things as spiritual or non-spiritual anymore. It's just kind of seeing that this existence is is spiritual, and, and, yeah. and kind of and noticing that more and more, you start to associate things with being more spiritual, and, and but actually, it Everything. all all is because it's and, about you being. And it's yeah. like we are like the plant, you know, the plant, or or that is that is life force in action. That is yeah. that is spirit, and we are everything. Is like 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 when we stop labeling things and saying um, that's a chair or this is a leg or this is a sofa. It's kind of like. It, it, sort of being present with all of these things and realizing actually it is all one interconnected sort of field and it, and and it existence yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and kind of um, yeah it's sort of yeah it's it's like um coming home really but I think all those things w- which you define as spiritual it's just realizing who you are yeah and 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 maybe that's the whole point of going life. back it's almost like going back to your default back to who you, who you really are your essence mm. and 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 realizing that that was always there all along and, yeah. and kind of like and it feels so lovely and effortless because it's kind of like a recognition of who you really are and 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 kind of like dissolving any sense of separation and, and something that isn't spiritual or, and actually and that's why I always feel so comfortable because it's like this is who we really are 
This mm. this seems like a good time um, for you to share the quote that you told me about. Oh yeah. Because I think that I think it fits quite nicely. Um. So yeah. So I did this um. Uh, course on uh, making videos of yourself. Um, how to sort of like be authentic on camera. Um, and this was a quote I I I said in that course because. Um, It just for me sort of summarizes um, what it is to kind of trust yourself and trust your voice rather than have a script or, or just plan everything in advance. Anyway, I'll read it. It's, um, he Ottawa Keys is an illusionist, um, was an illusionist, and and he said, when it comes to the requirements for pleasing an audience, all the knowledge and instruction and apparatus in the world is worth less than one ounce of soul. So I love that. Yeah. What what does that mean to you? Like when you when you first found it? Um if you could sum it up in like two, three words. I think simplicity. Yeah. I was gonna say trust. Or trust, yeah, yeah, yeah. Simplicity, trust. Because I think I mean that we I, we learnt this from from um our speakers club, right? I think that they say that, that public speaking is the number two fear of people, or number one fear, I don't even know what it is anymore. And it's because... It's number one, isn't is it? it? Is, is it number higher one? than death or something? <laughs> something like okay. that. Um, but, but I think that um, I certainly felt the first time that I did a six minute, I sort of, I sort of had done, so, so at Speaker Express has, has got a lot of different things that you can try out and the, you know, that you can try out being an MC and you can do an impromptu and um, uh, although I think that they've, they've changed a little bit about, um, about what, they, uh, what, what they do now because they work solely with, with entrepreneurs and business owners about conveying the message. But when I um, did the course, you, you could try out lots of different things and so I did all of those things because I was really scared of doing a six minute. And I felt like, you know, I had to be really prepared and I had to know exactly what I was going to say. And part of my speaking journey, I think, you know, when you start doing anything, you feel like you want to sort of be over prepared, like you kind of need to know where it's going to go. Because, you know, standing up on stage and what happens if you go blank and actually, you know what, you just carry on. Something emerges. Yeah, you yeah. carry on because that's what happened to me. And I that's happened to me a few times. And now... I kind of think about it in a different way and I think, well, what are the points that I want to make? Or what's something, one thing that's important for me to say and I don't, I'm not wedded to the actual words. I can freestyle and I can just see what comes up. And that's the beauty of, I think, conversation because yeah. you never really know where conversation's gonna go. And um, it's- That's why we didn't need to practice, we didn't need to prepare what, doing this, this yeah we just thought about was, well what's the topic yeah, yeah yeah and also okay so we found a quite a couple of quotes but as Lara said at, at the beginning before we what, started filming she said oh let's ha let's have a nice quote each that we like and then it's a starting point and then from that springs all Whatever. of all of this and and it's kind of like and that's the same with um so when I help people with like um being on camera and things like that it's kind of like um you know Someone came to me recently with like a script, and I, and and I'm always encouraging people just to put the script down and and maybe have a few ideas of like you know like like a quote or a couple of bullet points or whatever, but actually just trusting, trusting the trusting the unknown, trusting the power of the natural creative force that you are to actually and I guess your heart, through. trusting yourself, trusting your heart. Yeah, which is a hard and being, thing. Be, like speaking the moment as well. Yeah. I think there's something really powerful about speaking the moment rather than speaking the script that you wrote two weeks ago or whatever, actually speaking what's fresh now, here, now, is so much more powerful and so much more because you're connected to yourself in that moment so you're more connected to the people you're talking to and, and actually that expression is what people want to hear. They don't want to hear some kind of like carefully, you know, written thing that isn't, it isn't fresh. And it so isn't, and it, pro you know, maybe it's, it, it's, it comes across as a little... Um, Detached. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I went to a concert last night, which was so amazing. I can't wait to show you the videos. Um, but apart from the fact that the songs were amazing and his voice, it was Lucas Graham. Um, they're a Danish band. 
and um, what I what really struck me two things really struck me from last night um, because I introduced a friend who had never really seen them before and that was really exciting to share together the first thing is that he was a great front man and he made us all feel incredibly connected to him because of how much he shared about himself. So he shared um, he, a lot of the songs that he, he's written are because he's written to his father who passed away six and a half years ago. And it was a visually spectacular show in terms of the colors and the graphics. It was so beautiful. But also, you know, he shared a lot of personal photographs um, of him growing up like as a backdrop to, to you know, a few of the songs. And I tell you, it really made me feel so connected to him. And I just thought, wow, like how powerful that is where you can just get on stage and you can just be yourself. And it's, it's such a, it was such a beautiful thing, as well as then being visually spectacular. And I think the only other artist that I've seen really do that and really put emphasis on, on that is Jason Mraz. And I think maybe that, you know, when you do that, when it's not just beaming, you know, up your your image on on the screen, which I know for bigger venues you need to have. Mm -hmm. So for you know the stadiums, for the people that are right at the back of the eighty thousand stadium, yeah, you kind of do. But it's also really lovely to you know when you when you have art set to music. And I, I mean, I found that with Cirque du Soleil too in Vegas. See, when I saw Love, seeing the acrobatics set to the songs and interpret the songs, it's a beautiful beautiful combination mm. so yeah when you show who you are I think I think that people connect to you and I think that creativity there was that Julia Cameron quote that I don't remember offhand but it was about how you know in order to express yourself creatively you need to have a self to express which is so powerful have you have you read the artist's way as yet no I haven't actually it's, well, it's one of those ones that I've been meaning to um and yeah, because she sounds like she's really about that. Just kind of letting, yeah. letting it's it a twelve. Go. Well, I haven't, I haven't read the the book. Um, I'm actually going to the workshop in London in May, which I'm super excited about. Um, but it's a twelve week course, and so it's something that I want to follow. But my friend gave it to me for Christmas, which is why the, the what the two disciplines that I started off doing, even without doing the course, are morning pages which is um, you wake up in the morning and it's essentially kind of like a brain dump. So where you know how you wake up and you're kind of stressing about the day and everything, it's sort of for you to just get out all your thoughts um, in whatever higgledy-piggledy fashion, doesn't matter about spelling, doesn't matter about writing. It's not about censoring yourself and it's not about rereading with any intention. And I have to say, I've been doing morning pages for about 80 days now. Um, I've missed a few days here and there, uh, but it has been amazing, Jo. It's literally opened up all these things that I didn't even realize I was thinking. It's helped me work through problems. It's helped me, what's crazy is that it's actually helped me create content too. So I've like written, you know, ideas for a series of leadership videos and you know how to build trust in yourself and things it's it's flowing so naturally in these morning pages whereas if I think if I sat down and went okay right now I'm going to create content or I'm going to sort of think about what I want to talk about I don't think it would flow as easily yeah but I think you know when you kind of do stuff with no expectation it there's a little bit of magic that appears so I think it's yeah. nurturing it's like give the muscle, the creative muscle. I think that's what morning pages are supposed to do. Yeah, is is nurture and the creative muscle. And witnessing how, just how I, I, I just as you're speaking, the word abundance. It's kind of like the abundantness of yeah. our ability to create. It's kind yeah. of it's just almost like waiting, waiting for us just to sit with a blank page or you know, whatever it is. It's just it's that that power to to speak whenever we need to speak. Like that power is there all the time flowing through us just allowing that allowing that to sort of happen and trusting that and trusting the blank page and just going for it and um there's a guy robert holden he um he said something really beautiful about um the way he writes he's he's um he's got lovely books um and uh yeah he says he just lights a candle and he's just sort of present and and, and just you know says a little prayer or something and then and just like there's something about the way he talks about sort of just lighting the candle. What kind of books does he write? 
he so he sort of studies of course in miracles and he um oh, okay he's written a, a lot of books about love and and um sort of who we are and and remembering love and trusting that and um yeah but and he also does he's a hey how thought also he also does uh a writer's workshop i think with hey house and okay. so that was why he was he was talking about writing and he was talking about his process of writing and it just really hit me again how simple it was it was just kind of like to light a candle and to be and just to kind of almost ask the question what what wants to be expressed or something like that and then it just and then just starts and um without having this big plan um, yeah i mean i think that you know for people that i've told um about doing morning pages their question is usually, well, what if you don't know what to write? And um, and they say, well, if you don't know what to write, you say, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write, and you keep going. And that's, ne- that's never been a problem for me because I just like pour out stuff and, and I chop and change topics. But the writing pro, I mean, I think that if I was going to write a book, I wonder about what my process, w- process would be. Um, and what I found quite entertaining recently is that I listened to Simon Sinek on Cal Fussman's podcast. It was a great interview. And Simon talked about how, um, it's, it's hilarious actually. So his process for writing all of his different books has been different. And just when he thought he nailed it with the first one, so when he wrote Start With Why, which is now about 11 years old, um, he realized that he couldn't write in his apartment and he wrote on a plane journey. And so, he then, after he wrote on that plane journey, he thought, oh, I can write on planes. And so he would book a really cheap ticket to anywhere and just turn up to the airport. <laughs> How crazy is this? And he'd turn up to the airport with his laptop and then he would just write. And one time he flew to LA and back in a day. So Just he, so to write? Just to write. So then by the time he came to, to write his second book, um, Leaders Eat Last, he was like, ah, I've nailed this. I know how to do this. But he just, he turned, he was like on the way to the airport and something about it just felt wrong. Mm. And he was just like, no, I can't, I, that's not going to work for me. Um, so with that book, he said that he needed to get somebody in like a, like a, like a babysitter, like a writer sitter, um, just to basically have somebody else in the apartment going, are you writing? Because he said without that, he'd be, you know, surfing on like the internet or watching Netflix or, you know, wasting time. He sounds like he could be a master procrastinator, just like, (laughs) just like me. Um, And so, you know, and then he would like read things to, you know, that person a little bit. And then they would go, oh, that makes sense or it doesn't. So then he was kind of like, oh, you know, I got got this nailed. And now when he was writing The Infinite Game, um, he thought, oh, should I do that? And that didn't feel right. So now he said he, he has an office mm-hmm. and he actually goes to an office right. to write um, because he was finding that, you know, have it writing in his home, it was just a spillover. He couldn't really switch off yeah. between, you know, the writing and his personal life and everything. And so I just, I just, I just find that so interesting because it's really figuring out what works for you. Yeah, and I love that he's just tuning into what feels right for yeah, him. And, like intuition. And being prepared for that to change, obviously it just changes yeah. every time, every yeah, kind so of right. So exactly. yeah, just kind of like going, oh right, okay, what, what would be nice? Would it be nice to write outside, inside? Yeah, you know, office, and so you know, for people that are like, oh, well, I don't think the candle thing would work for me, or I don't no, think no. I can write in the evening, or I don't think I can write, it's literally just figuring out what works. I mean, that's the hardest thing yeah, in exactly. life, right? And I love the fact that, like, it could be really random, like, going on a plane. I mean, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I really I really loved that, you know. Quite expensive. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah, who knows what it, what it, it could be like, you know, I don't know, having a bath or whatever. You're like, you know. Yeah. Really funny. So, um, I think we should, like, bring this to a close. And um, I would say... What's the next creative thing you're going to do or and or see, consume? Oh. Um, I'm, re- I'm really into like going to musicals at the moment. I've just been to see um, Rock of Ages. Have you seen it? It's really hilarious. It's really I saw it in New York. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just really take the piss out of itself. I love it. Yeah, and well, it, has, it has Bon Jovi, And right? it has, yeah, really yeah. cheesy, again, and cheesy music, yeah. Europe. Um, so my next one, I want to go see Aladdin, actually, because that's... Um, oh, I've heard it's good. That's coming out as um, 
there's a film, isn't it? The live yes. animation yeah, with Will yeah, Smith. So yeah. that, and um, yeah, I really want to see the. I saw a clip of the stage show. I thought, oh, I really want to see that. Um, so that's my next. Um, and yeah, the other thing um, that re- that uh, I suppose is another example of sort of sparking a creative idea is um, like tarot cards. Or you, you've mm-hmm. got your oracle cards, um, your crystal cards, but I, you know, I just love. Um, so I, over the last few years, I've been experimenting with oracle cards and tarot cards and things. Again, um, they're similar to archetypes, really, where you can have this one kind of idea of a character or whatever, and then just seeing what emerges from that. Um, and I find it's a very creative. Thing to do if if I have a question I often ask uh, I often pick a card and then and then just look at the visuals or the or the words on it and then something about it just kind of um, sparks jumps out sparks at you. ideas and, and and just letting what sort of feeling what that wants to say or fe- having a sense of of a message and and yeah. uh, and I think again it's just a process of listening listening to and being open really. yeah yeah being open. And i think all of this is really um a process of listening isn't it mm-hmm. really kind of li- li- listening to what feels right lis- listening to your joy or your and your intuition fun. and your sense of self so for me i think i'm definitely going to do my morning pages in the afternoon because I'm, I'm, I'm a bit fluid like that, you yeah. know. Um, I enjoy the writing process um, and just getting my thoughts out. So that's probably the next thing I create. Um, of course, we're doing this together, so we're creating right now. And what am I consuming next? Um, next week, I'm going to see a play called Wilderness at the Hampstead Theatre, which is one of my favourite theatres, because it puts on amazing shows. Um, so I think the, the one thing that I, w- I would like to leave you with is something, is a question that was asked to Liz Gilbert at her Big Magic workshop. And what somebody said is that, you know, Liz was talking about writing and she was talking about um, the creative blocks that we all face. Um, and so the question was, well, how do you actually indulge or, or um, use or explore your creativity where if you have um, a really demanding job or you have a really um, debilitating health condition. And she gave the example of her former partner, um, Rhea, who uh, was, was, a, was a creative uh, force and um, used to write music and everything. And when she found that she was unable to play guitar, I think, she then sang. And so it's Liz Gilbert's answer was, you basically, you do what you can. You know, you do the smallest amount in the cracks of time that you have. And in doing that, if it then sparks joy, then you'll end up, you know, making more time. And so I would just encourage everyone to just start. You know, start something. Um, Don't care about the result. Don't care about being judged. Keep it to yourself initially if you want. You know, like part of the creative process being the exploration of self is that it's not really for anybody else. It's actually just for you. And I think that through that, you'll um, start to explore and get a sense of who you are. So I think we're done. Thank you so much, Jo, for being my third guest (laughs) on my red sofa. It feels like a really full circle moment, and I really appreciate that. So thank you for sparking my creativity. Aww, thank you for having and me. And thank you for being my guest. Now let's see if I can turn Hopefully. if I can turn this off. <laughs> it's been a bit of a challenge in previous ones. All right, take care, guys. Thank you.